Hey guys, how's it going? This is Natnader, and welcome to the first installment of the True Scary Stories with Nate series. I'm going to be running this like a television series in a way. I'll try to keep it interesting and informative with that paranormal or creepy twist in every episode. As this is a new series, I'll be revising and doing my best to make it as entertaining as possible, so please feel free to leave your comments and feedback below. Now as always, turn out the lights, get comfortable, and let the story begin. In 1977, the body of 47-year-old Teresita Barca was found in her torched apartment on the 15th floor of 2740 North Pine Grove Avenue in Chicago. A man named Alan Showery killed fellow hospital worker Teresita Barca by stabbing her and setting her body on fire. There was very little evidence linking Showery to the murder. In fact, the only evidence police had was an account from the sole witness, Teresita Bassa. Now, you might be asking, how is that possible? Isn't Teresita Bassa the name of the woman who was killed? Maybe she had a sister or unknown relative by the same name. Well, strangely enough, that was not the case here. Let's go back to the start and work our way around the events from the beginning, and maybe this will shed some light on these strange circumstances. Teresita Barca immigrated from the Philippines in a search to improve her life and found herself as a respiratory therapist at the now defunct Edgewater Hospital. February 21st, 1977. At about 9 p.m., firefighters responded to a call of a fire at a nearby building. Upon arrival, police discovered the body of Teresita Barca in her apartment engulfed in flames. She had been stabbed and burned. The autopsy indicated that she had not been violated. Nothing was missing from her apartment that they could see, and the police couldn't find any suspects. The only thing that was found was a note that indicated that someone under the initials of A.S. was supposed to give her some theatre tickets. Afterward, the case went cold. About six months later, Detective Joe Statula of Area 6 Homicide found a note on his desk to contact the Evanston Police Department about the Teresita Barca case. The family calling in told police that Mrs. Jose Chua had started to see the ghost of Teresita. The Chewers worked at the same hospital as Teresita, but only knew her in passing. One day, Mrs. Chua entered a trance-like state and began speaking in a different tongue. In a very scary, weird-like voice, she stated, I am Teresita Bassa. She thought she was dreaming at first, this would happen to her periodically for almost a week, and each time, a little bit more information would be given. The voice revealed the following information. The man responsible for the murder was a man by the name Alan Showery, and the proof could be found with Showery's girlfriend. The Chewers were terrified. The police, though somewhat apprehensive, decided to look into the information. They then made the connection to the note 
that had the initials A.S. The voice stated, After he killed me, he took my jewelry and gave it to his girlfriend. Co-workers indicated that Shori was supposed to go to Teresita's house to fix her television. When the police questioned him, he admitted that he had arrived at her home to fix her TV, but that he had returned home to get his tools. The girlfriend was interviewed, and she indicated that Alan had given her some jewellery. When the family of Teresita examined the jewellery, they were able to identify key pieces of jewellery that belonged to Teresita. So, the police confronted him again, and he finally confessed to her murder. He was arrested and tried for murder. The trial, dubbed Voice from the Grave, ended in a hung jury the first time. However, in the end, Alan Showery was sentenced to 14 years in prison. He was released sometime before 1990, after serving his sentence. He then relocated to Brooklyn, New York. So, what do you think about this case? A woman from a family, otherwise completely unconnected to the victim, is able to produce knowledge that no one besides the culprit should know. Was this a case of the paranormal? Or simply a series of strange coincidences? I'll leave that up for you to decide. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of True Stories with Nate. Until next time, stay tuned for more.